Okay, let's talk about narcolepsy in children. So narcolepsy is a lifelong neurologic disorder, and it's a disorder in which REM sleep intrudes into wakefulness. It commonly presents in adolescents, but it can also present in school-aged children. More commonly, it is a sporadic disorder, although sometimes it can be hereditary. So the main clinical feature in narcolepsy is daytime sleepiness, and this occurs in all narcoleptic patients. They can have sleep attacks as well, lasting 30 to 90 minutes, and it occurs more when they're sedentary. Uh, specifically, habitual napping after age 6 years is a red flag and should be investigated further. Cataplexy occurs in 80% of patients, and if it occurs, it's called type 1 narcolepsy, also known as narcolepsy with cataplexy. And if it's not present, it's type 2 narcolepsy or narcolepsy without cataplexy. So cataplexy is the loss of tone with normal consciousness. So they can either just drop their head down or kind of lean forwards, but they can also drop to the ground. It's usually provoked by a emotional trigger such as fright or laughter or surprise or anger. A unique feature in children with narcolepsy is that they can have what's called a cataplectic face where they can have jaw dropping, bilateral ptosis, or head rolling or tongue thrusting. Other clinical features you can see, hypnagogic hallucinations when falling asleep, hypnopompic hallucinations when waking up, you can have sleep paralysis when falling asleep or waking up. You, you can have frequent nighttime awakenings. You can have REM sleep behavior disorder. This is where there's no loss of tone during REM sleep and you can act out your dreams. And obesity and precocious puberty are also fairly unique features. So the mainstay of diagnostic testing is to do a polysomnogram followed by a multiple sleep latency test. You do have to stop stimulants and antidepressants for two weeks prior to the sleep study. This will make sure there's nothing altering the sleep-wake cycle. The polysomnography is done to exclude alternate causes of daytime sleepiness. And some features that you can see though that can be suggestive of narcolepsy are sleep onset REM, increased arousals, periodic limb movements, uh, REM sleep without atonia. After that it's followed by the multiple sleep latency test and this is the most important test to diagnose narcolepsy. You will see two or more sleep onset REM periods as well as a sleep latency under eight minutes. Uh, one thing to note is that children may not meet diagnostic criteria early in the disease, and this means that a sleep study may need to be re uh, completed later in the disease. So diagnosis. So there are some criteria that are required for diagnosis. The disease has to have lasted three months or more, and you have to have daily irresistible need to sleep or lapses into sleep. And then based on that multiple sleep latency test, you have to have two or more sleep onset REM periods, as well as a mean sleep latency that is under eight minutes. Type one narcolepsy is diagnosed if you have cataplexy and an ancillary test can be low CSF orexin Almost all type 1 narcoleptics have a low CSF orexin, and almost all type 1 narcoleptics also have a HLA-DQB1-0602 mutation. It's not required for diagnosis, however. Type 2 narcolepsy, uh, there's no cataplexy, and typically the CSF orexin is normal. The low 
see if Seth or Rexon and the HLA testing can be helpful in cases where the sleep study cannot be completed, such as in cases where you cannot stop the antidepressants. So treatment is symptomatic. There is a pediatric daytime sleepiness scale that can be used to track improvement. It begins with maintaining a regular sleep schedule and during the day you can have planned daytime naps, making sure to exercise to maintain wakefulness, and treating any psychiatric comorbidities with depression being the most common comorbidity. There's also pharmacologic treatment for daytime sleepiness Methylphenidate or other amphetamines can be helpful, and modafinil or armodafinil can also be helpful. Uh, for cataplexy, the treatment of choice is sodium oxybate. So in terms of prognosis, this disease typically does not affect a life expectancy, but it, it is still a lifelong disease. Sometimes the symptoms can get better in the last one or two decades.